All right. <clears throat> Good morning. Happy Friday. Oh, what a week. All right. It is uh, March 12th, 2021. My name is Jared, and welcome to the Morning Brew. We will go ahead and get started. Okay, so uh, probably news to no one, but the SPY pretty much right at all time high. Uh, from the daily chart perspective, we did make a new all time high. Um, we've seen V bounces in this market before. We've seen cases where we put in a low and then day to day, we make higher highs and higher lows on our daily candles. And that leads into the retest of the previous high and potentially even higher prices in the market. So the fact that the market is capable of doing these recoveries should not be a surprise to anyone. We just have to react whenever that very aggressive, very, I would say optimistic view does not work itself out. We have to be able to be flexible in both directions as the market is showing us volatility and the potential to sell pretty much at any time. So um, with spies at all time highs, if we dig into our 180 day four hour. We kind of want to see, OK, what's what's next for the spy? You know, what what can we be looking for for opportunity? And I mostly just want to look and see where the bears um, are going to be scouting, maybe trying to short this market. And I, I think they've already found a spot at the all time highs. Uh, we're getting a fairly notable, I would say, gap down uh, pre market. And we're, we're kind of losing some of the uh, range that we set in yesterday. But if I'm looking at a lower time frame perspective, uh, we're still sitting above 390, which continues to be a price level that I'm interested in. And I want to see where market participants go relative to that price. So as the market pulled away from 390, we had a lot of volatility. They got a little bit overstretched and we had some notable strength that was still holding in financials, industrials, energy. All of those kept me at least on the fence as to whether this was the start of something bigger, because really what we were seeing was weakness in tech. Um, everything else relative to weightings in the SPY held up fairly well, uh, except for consumer discretionaries, which had Tesla and Amazon uh, pulling it down. So now that we're back at all time highs, we could uh, kind of scout to see whether the bulls are going to hold this 390. And this would be a back test from above. And this could easily lead into a higher low in this time frame and just continuing this trend. In fact, um, what I want to kind of keep in mind, it is an aggressive trend, but we do have this sort of structure where there was a V bottom. We held it pretty well for a couple of days. We're kind of breaching below it now. And we just want to see if uh, bulls can pick up some strength by finding a new support zone. Uh, the bears are going to essentially be using the all time high as sort of a, um, uh, an area to, to consider. Uh, we're seeing a little bit of follow through this morning, but once again, the bears have the onus of proof now because during this V bottom, we have recovered all amount of the price range. <clears throat> So if, if the bears were really in control, they should have stopped us much sooner before we hit all time highs. They should have kept us at like a 50% bounce. And because they have not done that, now they need to prove it to us again as to whether or not they're even in control anymore or if it's just going to be more bullish drift moving forward. Um, <clears throat> we do have our, our channel to always keep in mind. 
at this point, um, if we're going to be bullish, I think 400 it has to be the target. Um, a pullback to 390, and then a you know a move away from value once again to come and test this channel and the 400 price target seems reasonable at this time. Um, but we we do need to be patient because this V bottom uh, occurred over the course of five days. And therefore, we could easily consolidate and start to pull back a little bit as more and more bulls uh, get into this market, start to participate. Um, we could also allow some of our moving averages to catch up on this time frame. And then um, just looking at our volume profile, <clears throat> uh, 390, 389, somewhere in there. Um, area of highest volume, areas areas of highest value. Uh, always want to be keeping it in mind. If we're too far removed, we tend to kind of snap back. If we can come to it and then move away from it, we can get good trending action uh, where there's very little resistance in the way. And that's also going to be true on this lower time frame. I would say, you know, 389 is probably the number. I, I keep saying 390 because it's just easier, but somewhere in this range. And um, yeah, I mean, a, a slight pullback after a V bottom is nothing of concern. The bears have the onus of proof now as to whether or not they can sell the market from this double top perspective, or if the bulls are just gonna find some new support and break us up even higher. So. Um, bring this back. Okay. So, of concern to us are the Qs. We know that the Qs were the weakest market. They have shown <clears throat> that they cannot recover all time highs as of yet. And most notably, we are seeing some concerning daily looks on the Qs relative to moving average crosses. And we have a lot of resistance to continue to test as we move higher. Um, essentially, if the queues are no longer the leaders in this market, the tech sector is no longer going to bring us higher. The SPY is now relying on other sectors, aka financials, industrials, energy, maybe even some material and metal strength um, to carry us higher. The, the question is going to be, is tech going to sell or is tech going to consolidate? If tech sells, then that could be enough of a drag on the overall markets to hurt us in the short term. And if things like financials, energy industrials also pull back and sell, that can be the start of something a little bit bigger where we have a full sector sort of uh, drag on the SPY. Um, if tech consolidates and the other sectors continue to be strong, then the SPY can move higher, <clears throat> albeit not on the back of tech. It's basically a rotation in who's in charge, who's leading, who's lagging, and you know who's kind of in between. Sometimes things are not necessarily directional. They're mostly just consolidating for a more directional base move in the future. So with tech, you know, keep an eye on what the queues are going to do at this point, because notably the SPY at all time highs, the queues are not at all time highs. That is a very obvious way to indicate that they have not recovered from the selling that they experienced. Um, short term, 180 day, four hour, we have our little downtrend to kind of keep on watch. They are pulling back into it. They, they breached it slightly yesterday, and it looks like there's some um, a pullback in the overall markets this morning, so we're seeing that in the queues as well. Um, really, for me, I'm just looking at 311 into 310. If they can hold this range, and if the overall markets can continue higher, the queues at least have a chance to slowly make their way back to test resistance, which we have at 325. Um, if the market pulls back pretty heavy, 
things like Apple, Microsoft, and all of our big uh, conglomerate sort of tech quote unquote names could be weighed down by a pullback in the SPY. And then with the Qs, they have other components like semiconductors and just uh, high growth names that could also lead to some relative weakness. Um, from the perspective of just the QQQ chart, 310 is sort of the range that I wanna see them hold. And once again, we're not really looking at the V bottom approach here, we're just looking range to range. So they held 300, they got through 310, they're pulling back to 310, this is normal. Uh, they're testing the lower end of the range. Can they get to the top end of the range? We wanna, short term, we wanna keep that in mind because that is a tradable uh, set of price levels that we can use. 10 day, 30 minute volume profile. Uh, 311 is our VPOC. So once again, you know, there's no, um, no surprise that the market is pulling back to value. The SPY is doing it, so why not the Qs? Um, we have our sort of range support here. I'll just pull it out a little bit more. You can see how the market reacts at these price levels. And then we have our topper, our, <laughs> our upper uh, reactionary zone, 325. So 311 value. I would say if the SPY continues higher, the Qs have a good chance. If the SPY pulls back heavier than we expect, the Qs could easily lose this 310 area and once again try and hold up at these lower ranges. Um, it's really going to be based on things like big tech, uh, the Apples, the Microsofts, the Googles, etc. cetera. Uh, IWM, once again, our stronger market. Let me bring this back. Okay. Um, so once again, no surprise, not only did they make all-time highs, but they broke through their all-time highs much more convincingly than the SPY. So this is that whole idea of if you're going to scout a bullish entry, why not scout the strongest markets? And the IWM has continued to be the outperformer, so why not look to this market to make the stronger move and break through price levels more convincingly? Um, so, you know, daily chart, V bottom, higher highs, higher lows every single day into a breakout, 180 day, four hour. Not only are we broken out, but we're actually holding above all time highs. So for me, unlike the SPY, which had to pull back into a range lower than their previous high, the IWM has a chance to hold its recent all-time high as support. It broke through a resistance zone. Now we're gonna to look to see if that's gonna be support. So, you know, the, the story continues where um, this market is the strongest. It has the potential to set higher price levels relative to a pullback. And that's something we wanna see if they can do that today or tomorrow. Uh, we should know pretty soon whether they can come back and bounce. Um, I'll just go to the one hour and just see where value is over the past month. Looks like value is at 226. So with 230 being our first area for them to hold, uh, if they choose not to hold it, a pullback to 226 could be in the cards. And really that just brings us back to Wednesday's price action, where we basically had like a pretty tight range day on Wednesday. Um, you know, ultimately the SPY would have to pull back a little bit further and we might see that larger pullback in this area. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, <laughs> uh, we, we kind of just want to see if this market can outperform. Uh, it has continued to do so, do so relative to the range that it's setting and also the outperformance of its recent highs. So, um, yeah, it looks like 223 on the 10-day price level. So there, there is potential for this market to pull back further than all-time highs. Uh, one thing I, I kind of want to keep in mind, and this is more analysis of the volume profile. This market's a little bit less liquid, so it's it sets these uh, gaps a little bit more. 
But when I see stuff like this, where you have just a lack of value, I want to keep in mind that if we lose this area, we could easily fall through to this area. So yes, we have all time high, but I think short term, there's not a lot of support in this range. So maybe 227.50 on a pullback would be a more notable pullback to value. Um, something to keep in mind, this, this is more short term analysis. Uh, this would probably need to occur today or tomorrow. And then this pullback to value would be sort of the first attempt to hold uh, a higher price level. Once again, bringing us back to Wednesday, uh, uh, Wednesday range, yeah. So, um, some things from yesterday, just wanted to call out, uh, we did have some decent price action that was notable. Uh, I brought up stocks like Facebook. Let me take this off, just get us to our, our moving averages. Uh, Facebook was trapped in a range. Uh, we had 265, 266 roughly, uh, down to 255. And it's been there for about two weeks. Um, we had an attempt to break out, but a little bit of uh, selling pressure on the first attempt. And then we had a notable breakout on yesterday. Um, this was a signal to me uh, because I was looking at stocks like this in the communication sector that were very tight, very consolidation looking. If they could break higher and if everything else looks at least decent, the market had a good chance to move higher. And when I saw Facebook attempting to do this, along with stocks like Google, which I would say have not fully cleared the range, but are at least putting in that attempt uh, definitely a strong day in Google. When I see stuff like that, I just look around and say, okay, is anything else really dragging us down? And yesterday, while we didn't have a full court press across the board, there's a lot of stuff that was really strong, uh, a lot of stuff with a lot of market cap, and tech held up with a, a decent, um, I would say like almost a uh, reversal type structure because we sold off Wednesday and then we gapped up and went higher on Thursday. XLF uh, holding near all time highs, so nothing of concern there. As long as it's holding and not selling, I'm not concerned. Energy possibly putting in a, maybe a short term pullback. Uh, this is, I would say short term a little bit uh, bearish, but um, not a lot of selling here and also not losing everything that we put in over the past couple days. XLI, industrials holding, and then stuff like XLY, which, which was weak with um, some of the selling in Tesla and Amazon, very similar to tech where we had sort of a, a I would say a doji candle, but we did gap above it and we held. So seeing that allowed the market to go higher and break through its all-time highs along with um, the tech sector at least holding up fairly well that day and that was that was just yesterday <laughs> so um yeah some some good price action yesterday i think some convincing breakouts on some of the notable names and hopefully some tradable action that we could have taken based on yesterday's analysis so um, with that said, today is Friday and I do not have a ton of uh, analysis left to do. Um, the last 10 minutes, I kind of want to open it up and see if there's any specific questions you want to look at, anything in particular that I've uh, reviewed that maybe you'll have some uh, deeper questions on and just ultimately open the, the door a little bit. Um, I'll start off with the bearable traders chat, give them the uh, priority in this case. Uh, let's see, so I've got a question. Do you ever consider the S&P 500 equal weight index when determining overall market strength and weakness? Uh, personally, I do not. Um, I've looked at it maybe a few times in my history as a trader. I think 
I, I personally would rather spend the time looking across the notable sectors and I can at least conceptualize the weightings in my own uh, percentages because I know what they are. And that's why I brought up that view of how tech is, you know, anywhere from 25 to 27 percent, uh, Nexus financials and um, let's see, uh, Trying to remember, now I'm trying to remember, it got me on the spot. Uh, but at any point, if I need to pull that up, I can always go to here and just see, you know, who's doing what, uh, healthcare, human discretionaries. So these five are the ones I care about. Uh, we actually didn't look at healthcare. Let me do that. So healthcare. I think there is a little look of concern here because we keep selling these topping tails are a little bit of concern. So I think healthcare is one I'm going to keep on watch. Um, there's some notable, I would just say short term weakness. They, they keep selling into any strength that we see at these higher levels, about 115. So uh, let's see. Uh, can you look at TLT and give it a view? Yeah, so TLT, this is going to be our 10-year, uh, well, it's actually a blend of, uh, of our bond market. Um, and you have to actually look at what we're doing today. We're going down, unfortunately, <laughs> for me. Um, I think there's just a very strong downtrend in here as rates continue to rise. Um, you know, the weakness we've seen in tech could continue just based on fear of rates increasing and when you have short-term rates increasing the bond market tends to sell uh, they are inversely correlated so uh, yeah notable downtrend here I think we had an attempt to put in some sort of capitulation low on high volume and that did see follow through for one day but we've tightened up on this range right here so we have our uh, low high uh, higher low lower high equilibrium, wedge, whatever you want to call it, and we're breaking down. So, you know, the direction is still down. That If this was going to reverse trend, they had to do it in this equilibrium, and they didn't. So, uh, rates go higher, bonds go lower. You primarily use MACD for longer term charts. Yeah, uh, longer term being like maybe four hour is the lowest I'll go. You can scout sort of like an oversold bounce uh, if you combine some other indicators on like a one hour chart. But if you go much lower than that, you need to combine some other uh, structure into it. Um, when the market's selling heavily though, I, I do try and look at some of those ind indicators to see if I can find a bottom trying to be put in. Um, and you know, same thing with the top. But usually the bottoms are a little more straightforward because they're more volatile and you get oversold quicker on four hour, one hour, you know, smaller time frames. Okay, I'm going to shift over to YouTube just to see if there's any questions. Dakota Marshall, I've just started to get into day trading. Is this channel helpful for day traders? I would say absolutely. Uh, we do this pre market prep every single morning. Uh, myself starting at 8 o'clock Eastern doing high-level market analysis and then shifting right into intraday analysis looking at where we are some opportunities some gappers levels uh, news upcoming events you know we we really try and cover the gambit here so I think it's pretty helpful uh, I think if you're if you're here on YouTube you could also agree the channel is pretty helpful and we put together a lot of information for y'all Let's see. And that's all I got on YouTube. Let's see. Back to the chat. Where can we find the breakdown of sectors in the SPY? Uh, for the ETFs, I'm going to just pull up my list here. So um, it's going to be a lot of uh, SPIDER, SPDR ETFs. But um, there's a list of 11 that represent all sectors. And then there's some other uh, smaller industries like subsectors or industry ETFs that still 
uh, comprise uh, companies that are in the SPY. So you have, you know, your 11 main sectors, and then you can break those down into smaller uh, sub subsectors or industries. But uh, I can I can post this list uh, when I'm when I'm done here if you want it immediately. Let me just uh, I'll screen cap what I have. Set here. Uh, it's also available in the room drive. I have it in a uh, format that can be uploaded to DOS uh, if needed. Any books you recommend for technical analysis? Um, we have some recommendations both on the BBT website. Um, I don't have anything of note. I mean, I've, I've learned a lot of this through experience and, and a lot of free resources. Um, but also just, you know, repetition, what's, what's actually relevant and what actually works most of the time. Um, I'm sure there are some recommendations in the chat, uh, and, and we could maybe look into a few uh, today, but I don't have any off the top of my head. Let's see. Making sure I'm answering questions. Uh, how to tell if GME has another big squeeze. Uh, <clears throat> so far, it's holding the 20. So the daily chart on this thing. Uh, if I pull down to a four hour, it's holding the 20 moving average on the four hour. So we're just trending right now, even amidst this big. 50% drop. I mean, if you're just looking from a trending perspective, it is trending. So, what website do you look at for long term trading ideas? I don't have a website. I mean, if you have these tools, you can, you just pull up stocks that you're interested in and, and perform analysis. I don't, I don't have any website resource for that. Let's see. Uh, with yields going up, the bank should be good today. I think that's the overall structure that we we keep seeing. That's the correlation that we keep seeing. Financials love higher yields in the short um, the short duration notes, and then the longer term. Um, I, I think you know the the disparity between the two is what they're interested in. But short term yields going higher, the banks have seen uh, bullish behavior in that environment. The question is, is there an inflection point where that no longer becomes true? And is the Fed going to ever intervene at any point to control the strong increase in the yield? Um, that's something that you know we're kind of keeping an eye on as we go through week to week. So. Okay, well, uh, I'm nearing the end of my time frame here, so I think I can go through any other questions in the chat. Uh, Christina is asking about triple witching. I think on those types of days, um, you just expect a little bit of odd price action near the close as people are starting to roll out or update their option, future, and other uh, positional risk. So it's not necessarily in, in my opinion, it's not something that you need to be too concerned with, but there can be a little bit of odd price action. If you're a day trader, I think just, you know, having your heart stops in in case the market does something odd. Uh, but that tends to happen closer to the end of the trading session. And keep in mind, it happens every month. So, um, well, I guess a, a quad witch, witching happens every three months, but um, you know, it's it's not a it's not an uncommon event for the market, and it's definitely a tradable day. You don't have to be afraid of it. So, okay, well, um, I'll go ahead and answer any other questions in the chat. But that's my time. Um, appreciate all the good feedback I've been getting. This is my second week on the morning brew, so it uh, really helps keep me going. Um, keep an eye out for resources coming. I'll be doing that over this uh, this weekend. 
And with that said, let's kick it off with Carlos and Norm for our Friday session. My name's Jared. This has been The Morning Brew, signing off.
All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the pre-market show. I hope everyone's having an amazing morning. Hope you had a great day yesterday. Um, Noah will be joining us shortly, but for the meantime, we'll get started and uh, and go through some of the stuff we have yesterday. So, all right, guys, let's get to it. Let's see what we had on our list, starting with, um, let's look at Roblox. So we have Roblox on our list yesterday, uh, and this thing was just insane. So if you're watching this, you knew it. It's Again, it's had a crazy pre-market action heading. Oh, let me get you on the right chart here. Heading all the way up to 91 bucks, all the way up here, 91, 91, and then dropping down. This was the pre-market action yesterday. Again, uh, very, very crazy there. And then you can see here how it um, drops down at the market open. They give you a nice pop and then just continues to drop nicely into some of these levels. So that, that did very well there. Um, and then it, it looked like it wanted to break out throughout the morning. Uh, right in here around the mid morning, it looked like it wanted to hold this base and get going, but it never did. Unfortunately, they give you a couple of good pops here if you were quick and to take advantage of them, but for the most part, did not really uh, give you a nice squeeze to get towards some of these levels it had here in the pre market. So that was Roblox. And again, you want to be careful with this one, guys. The spread on this thing, I was watching it closely, uh, was roughly at times about 50, 50 cents or so easily. So again, be very, very careful with this one. It, it moves very, very uh, aggressively. All right, next thing we have on here is going to be Apple. Apple was on the list as well. Again, nice pop here, then continues to drop. Didn't really uh, do much after that though. Again, it was a very choppy day yesterday for me. I didn't did not see a lot of things that traded great at the open. Uh, Apple does drop and it does give you a beautiful bounce here, but aside from that, it doesn't do a whole lot into uh, into the, the rest of the day here. So that was Apple AMD. Uh, was actually one of the cleanest ones we had yesterday on our list. This one popped up nicely. They give you a couple of big drops here below the view app, but look how it holds nicely. This nine moving average later in the day does break the high of the day and gives you a beautiful continuation. So hopefully uh, Peter took uh, advantage of that. Yesterday, again, AMD trading very, very clean. Uh, we also had Neo on deck. Neo actually was not bad, guys. Nice, beautiful double bottom here of the five minute. Look at the breakout here above the moving average in the V app and then that also takes off and trades very very well into uh into the, in the afternoon of the day here so that was nice uh ba didn't trade as clean as it had the last couple of days we've seen some pretty good pre-market action out of this one uh unfortunately gives you a nice pop here pretty choppy in this area um but again does drop down here nicely but again this pop here was really really nice on on ba yesterday ccib i had this one on deck too very choppy first hour hour and a half and then look how it just flipped the switch here and look how clean this becomes later in the day so uh again definitely requires some patience at the at the morning open hour and a, hour and a half in things were a little bit choppy they did get better later uh down down the line uh with that said good morning norm how are you doing today hey buddy i'm doing all right sorry i guess i had some sort of a software problem i thought i was with you but i guess i was not so i am i am here now no worries no worries with that said let's get right to the market post see what's going on for uh this day as we end the week yeah man we got uh we got bond yields up a little bit uh this morning so um that's causing the markets to yet again pull back we hit those all-time highs yesterday on spy um specifically spy and so we'll see we'll see how it pans out uh jared's already done a great breakdown so i'm not going to retread over over all that stuff again uh not a whole lot of economic data we do have cons uh consumer sentiment out i believe at 10 a.m this morning and uh we just had uh some ppi info come out uh right before we came on so that's where we sit Carlos, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, you were on mute. on mute. Yeah, sorry about that. All right, let's uh, delete some rows here, create some new ones, and we will start on our gapping up list this morning. So two low flow stocks or lower flow stocks, 23 million is okay, depending how it's trading. Uh, starting with ENTX, this one this morning up 55.4 at the moment, 12.4 uh, million shares traded right now. So again, very, very active. Was active yesterday as well. Uh, let's take a look on this one. As you can see here, we've got a pop going. Then it was it was okay for a low flow stock into the uh, into the intraday. So you got a couple of nice breakouts here. Um, that could be interesting. We'll keep an eye on that one for a low flow possibility. Uh, 
A N I X. Uh, this one not looking as good yet, right? You got some volume here, five five sixteen. Well, they um, just had news come out a couple of minutes ago, well, they so did. they're going to need a little time to warm up here. But I think this one actually looks pretty decent. Mm, mm, we'll five. see. We'll see if it can continue. This, you know, sometimes. This, so they had patent news, I believe, come out uh, come out of Europe, uh, and and just broke. I don't know what ten minutes ago maybe. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see if it holds. Right now, obviously, it popped up thirty six percent, and then it, it ran to eight, and then pulled back from there. So who knows? Yeah. Sometimes you see these; they get the big pop, and then they just sell off all the way to back to yesterday. Yep, yeah, absolutely. This one's sitting at twenty three million shares flow, and it's great that it has news. So we'll keep it on here. Uh, see how that. Uh, continues there nvax this one is up a uh, 15.7 at the moment 254,000 shares traded again this is a very difficult stock to trade guys the spread on this one is horrible not just in the pre-market also at the market open i avoid trading this one even watching it on my list i just do not like the way this one trade is not for me it's not a good intraday trading stock so we'll skip on that one uh alt this one at the moment uh, up 10 percent 348,000 shares traded the pre-market action has got a little bit of gaps in between here not not too bad uh, the daily, for the most part, doesn't get great volume, though. So uh, it looks like uh, below 3.2, 3 million shares for the most part any given day here. So that could be a little bit uh, concerning there as far as getting a good, nice price action at the intraday open. So uh, at the market open. So um, we'll see. We'll come back to if it gets better. But at the moment, I'm going to keep it off. AVAO. Now, we know this one was on fire the last couple of days, uh, popping up and then dropping down yesterday. Uh, again, they're up another 7.5 today, 2.5 million shares float um i'm sorry 2.5 uh 2.5 million shares traded the flow is 25 million on this one we're going to add this one to our risky pile over here uh let's see how that gets going today koss is a low flow stock we are looked at and have traded before in the past this morning they don't have a whole lot of volume they are up 6.4 uh but only 496,000. so not 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 great at the moment i think these look a little bit better today for our low flow pile um, not a lot in the green that looks great this morning mvis what do we have going on here this one doesn't look great also a, a ticker that i rarely keep on my list uh gamestop is up nicely here 3.9 so that's good nice entertainment uh, stock here to look at so we'll put that on there uh go ev uh at the moment is uh, up 3.5 307 um interesting and not a lot that's up this one looks okay on the daily pre-market could be better of course um not my favorite uh ev type stock but we'll keep it on here let's see what we can get out of that one um all right let's take a look what's gapping down as you can see there is a lot on here with the market again hitting all-time highs and then uh selling off yesterday let's start here with pow uh this one does not look great guys look at the pre-market action how choppy it is at the moment it's down 20 percent, which is nice but then you look at this daily and you see how choppy this is and that is mainly because of lack of volume if you come down here you look at the volume they're getting per day it's very very light so that's not going to be a good one for us today, at least not at the moment. It's on uh, the secondary as well, just a heads up. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, so even horrible, not great, not a great catalyst to trade on. Uh, FINV, this one popped up nicely yesterday, looks like it, without looking at how the intraday action was. Uh, <clears throat> Pre-market's not looking great at the moment. It is down 16%, so I do like that. It is starting to get a little bit better, though. Here after 8 o'clock, you can see getting a little bit more volume. The daily on this one, though, is just... The fun could be over on this already. Uh, again, had the great breakout yesterday. Let's see how that breakout actually was. Was that even something that was uh, somewhat traded? Well, so they just kind of grind all day here with, a, with volume just increasing. So that's not bad, actually. Uh, that is traded if you catch some of the high of day um, scanner starts hitting some of that. You can see that there building up and the volume building up as well. So not too bad there. Um, could be interesting today, depending on what it wants to do. The float on this one, 187 uh this could be a very slim possible not typically the type of stock i like to watch uh but this this drop is good we do have shares for sure on it you got to be very careful lower price stock there uh here is ride ride taking a nice hit this morning uh down 15.6 1.8 million love the volume we're getting at at the moment um yeah this is a good one let's keep an eye on this one uh here we go um S C H P T. this one also has got great volume guys 630 and look how clean this uh, pre-market action looks right. You see, there's some good candles here connecting with each other. Got some, got a nice range as well. Down 13%. Uh, this is pretty, pretty nice. The daily is okay, not great, but the pre-market action this morning I do like on this one. What is this? Uh, they, had, they had earnings last night, by the way. They did. Yeah. Uh, 
I like that. We'll definitely throw that on there. Uh, CHPT looks good, guys. I like the pre-market action here. Uh, Daily's uh, okay, not great, but uh, I do like the action right now. SLGG, I think this was on our list almost every uh, single day on our gappers list. We're gapping down. Uh, again, they don't. They just don't trade well. If you saw it yesterday, uh, here you can see you got a nice pop here, maybe for a great scalping opportunity. But for the most part, very very choppy. Although a lot, a lot of stuff was choppy yesterday, so we really can uh, beat it up too much. Pre-market action doesn't look great for me right now. It is down 11.7. And then daily, just look at the daily. It's just so choppy all over the place. Um, I'm gonna keep it off my list. 18.5 million shares float. You guys know anything under 20, we wanna see some amazing volume like we're seeing on some of these down here. AVAO 2.6, uh, although the pre market is selling down a little bit here. This is what Norm was talking about earlier. Sometimes you get these pops and they just start kind of selling down. You could find a base uh, later down the line that can come up and retest the highs of the pre market, yeah. but you have to be patient, right? Do not try to time the bottom on, the, on this. Um, you know, that could be brutal. You gotta wait for the volume to come in. Yes. I mean, look at, you, you see some people tried to get that at that eight o'clock when it popped again, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then the volume just died and it's gone. So right. Right. who knows if it, it looks like it wants to break down from there, but. Yeah, yeah, so just be very, very careful on something like this, guys. So many fake outs that you get on these lower type flow stocks, and that's what makes them so dangerous. Uh, NIX, uh, again, more volume here, and NETX also has great volume. Good pre-market action right now. A lot of nice range there. Let's see how that continues to build. Um, all right, we left off at a CAN. This one, uh, Bitcoin is uh, down here 10% at the moment. This one looks good. Hey, good Carlos. Good pre-market action. Yeah. Uh, I think your gain or volume is way down. Um, oh, and this, some people are mentioning it on YouTube specifically. So. Oh, okay. Let's check here what's going on. Uh, there you go. Hopefully that's Much better. Much better. Okay, yeah. perfect. All right, sweet. Thank you, guys. Uh, all right, so here it is, C-A-N. Let me make sure I'm not clipping, though. Uh, okay, I'm getting some rest signals there. All right, so C-A-N C -A -N, C -A -N at the moment, a nice Bitcoin play here. Great pre-market action, great volume, down 9.7. This one is shortable, so it will be interesting to see how the Bitcoin stuff is uh, going on today. Let's take a look at Mara. Mara uh, also looking okay. C-A-N looks a lot better with more volume. What's the other one? We have Riot as well. Uh, yeah, CN is the one that's looking pretty pretty neat this morning, so we'll keep an eye on that one. I also love their daily uh, as well. Very careful, guys. This thing can move very aggressively. 90 cents candles easily. Uh, NCTY, we see this in our gappers list quite a bit. I do not like the way this thing trades. It can be very choppy. It can also, the spread can be horrible. So I'm going to keep it off my list. 5.3 million shares flow at $55. Price tag is usually uh, scary stuff if you're not getting great volume and you do not, and if you do not have a great, uh, great spread. Uh, CAN we do have already, ENG, uh, nope, not looking good, not a great pre-market action. I think I might stop here. Let's look at eyes. A lot of low flow stocks in this um, this list this morning on the gapping downside. Um, but yeah, we'll stop here, guys. We got a couple that look great. I like Rye this morning. I love this drop. I like the volume. We got CHPT so far. This one looks good. Uh, and we also have CAN. So that's what I like at the moment. Norm, what do you have on your end that you, that you like? I got two for you today. Boeing, BA, they had a big order go through uh, this morning that was announced for 737 MAX. Mm. Got more expected out of Southwest Airlines uh, anytime. So that uh, had that big pop this morning. We'll see how it plays out. It's been a great one the last few days. The yes. other is CPNG, new ticker IPO'd yesterday. This is an internet retailer in South Korea, similar to uh, Amazon. Oh, nice, nice. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, I, it, keep in mind on that CPNG, uh, oh, I actually surprisingly do have shorts available. A lot of times you don't for something that new. Yeah, um, yeah. There, are, there aren't many. They could, they could disappear. Mm -hmm. um, but. Yeah, that, that, that is interesting. Like if you look at some of these IPOs like Roblox yesterday, there was no shares for sure. And, and uh, this one does have a bit. Um, so definitely check that out. Uh, someone mentioned CHPT. Yeah, this does not have shares for sure. Yeah, I didn't no I notice that. You know, I'll keep it on here for now anyways. I mean, they're down nicely 12% here. Um, let's see. Let's see what comes out of it. Unfortunately, no shares for sure at the moment. Um, that's a shame. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. Maybe we'll replace you know, it with something better. I have an better. aversion to trading charge point, the CHPT, because to me, mm -hmm. when I see that, Mm -hmm. I, you know how we come up with nicknames like uh, DraftKings, DKNG is Donkey Kong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one, this one to me says Chopped. And it's a, <laughs> Chopped. while it's a great, while it's a great TV show, and we've even had one of our members that was on this on the show. Yeah, uh, yeah. Shout out to Megan there. It, it, 
I, I don't want to get chopped when I'm trading. <laughs> so yeah, I, well, it, that you know, I I, I, <laughs> I agree. Um, so yeah, it, uh, it it does look interesting. Sucks we can't short it, uh, but we'll, we'll see how that's gonna turn out. Um, all right, guys, let's get to our chat room. Uh, let's see what you guys have this morning. Let's start with uh, what do we have here? Let's start with Jesse. Jesse's giving us Baba B A B A. Let's take a look there. Uh, they are down two point seven this morning. Daily looks interesting. Uh, volume is there. Four hundred two is great for Baba. That's good, good volume. Now you got, got to keep in mind, Baba is one of these stocks that you have to you have to know how to trade this specific stock. You know, it's it it's not the easiest stock to trade. Um, so just be careful on that. Uh, again, we'll keep it on here. I do like their pre-market action today for this type of stock. This is actually pretty good, and they got great volume this morning. So definitely uh, worth taking a look at, at least as, as a secondary for me, because I don't like this stock that much for me personally. Uh, Neo, Neo 2.9. Let's remove some of these levels here. Uh, 2.9 million shares traded right now. They're down 4.4. Again, great pre-market action. This is a good one to watch as well. We've been watching this one probably all week. Uh, it definitely has been exciting. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Apple. What do we have there? Apple at the moment. See, Apple is one of these, uh, again, Apple is going to continue to be a market play here, guys. So, um, again, 1.4 million shares traded. They're down 1.6. Obviously, the market is down. Apple is a good one to watch and hopefully uh, takes advantage of a move if the SPY does start trending. Let's look at QS. I think QS we have seen in the past. It, it, uh, uh, I liked QS here when, we, when it held this level. You guys remember that? We had a couple of nice breakouts there. Um, so that was fun. Uh, at the moment, they are down 3.2. I don't see great volume out of QS, but again, nice stock. Usually don't get great volume at the pre-market, um, but I'm going to keep it off my list, guys. I think we got some other stuff here that has great volume that looks a little bit more, more explosive at the moment. For example, I like Ride this morning. It's a great, great drop. Amazing volume right now. Uh, I like the daily also on this one. BA looks really good, guys. Nice pop. Great volume. Good. And a catalyst behind it as well. This thing has been very strong and trading very well. So I want to keep some of this stuff on the list um so let's see if we can find something that looks similar to those and ndm at the moment uh and ndm could be good i got some great volume here 1.3 down 4.4 uh but it was down even more than that with the market drop you know very early this morning look coming back a little bit out of that could be interesting had a big day yesterday nice uh nice uh green day there let's see if and then and ndm has some continuation moves here uh heading down or what do we have uh ba is on deck that's good xpf Let's take a look at XPEF here. Uh, what do we have on XPEF? Oops. If I can type today, it would be great. XPEF. There we go. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So similar to Neo, guys. Again, you can watch either one. I'm going to keep Neo. Again, they're very, very similar right now. I'll keep Neo on deck. You can watch that one if you like, but I'll keep Neo for now. That one is also looking very good, guys. Very active this morning. Uh, NLSP. Let's take a look at their NLSP. Uh, this was taken off nicely. What is this? What do we have going on here? NLSP. What's the float on this? 5.7. Good volume. 12.8 million shares traded right now. Yeah, we can add this to our risky uh, lower flow pile over here. NLSP. There we go. We'll add that there. We'll take a look and keep at least the best two out of the, that group there. Let's look at the travel sector. I see you guys throwing out um, some cruise lines on here. NCLH. Uh, see what's happening there. I don't see great volume on NCLH. Um, the daily doesn't look too interesting. If it had volume and we had this daily, that would look good because a possible breakout. Uh, I don't see a lot going on there. CCL, um, CCL also doesn't have great volume. So I'm not sure if these are in play today, guys. Um, so I'm gonna pass on those for now. Here is Oxy. Oxy, uh, not a whole lot of volume, but this could be very explosive. I do like the daily on this one, possible retest of some of these 32 and 33.43, depending how the SPY is going to be. So um, I'm gonna keep it off my list right now because just the volume is not as explosive as I would like at the moment. BA, we do have Baba CEO stepping down. Okay, that could be interesting. We have Baba here. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's good. That's good catalyst there. Um, and NDM, we looked at TIGR. TIGR, we look at quite a bit, and I don't really like the way this one trades. Let's see what it's doing today. TIGR, for the most part, down 5.8, 544,000 shares traded. Um, uh, I don't know. I'm not, not a big fan of the way it looks right now. I'm going to pass on it, guys. I think we have better stuff on our list at the moment. PLTR, uh, nope, that's not it. PLTR, there we go. 
Uh, PRTR 2.2, that's great volume, down 3.3. Again, you're going to see this a lot in a lot of stocks this morning. The big drop, you know, after this, you know, the uh, spy drop in overnight and things like that. And then you have the little comeback that we're seeing on many, many stocks. Now, although this is kind of the pattern we're seeing, I want to see volume as well with this, right? So, for example, Apple, Neo, uh, CPNG 1.6, not, not a great pre market action, but we'll see recent IPO how that's going to turn out. Uh, CAN looks good. And then uh, SHPT, although we don't have no shares for sure, unfortunately, this looks good, but uh, we might drop that down. Rye looks great, guys. Look at this beautiful drop here, 2.4. Any news on Rye? This is a big drop uh, for Rye this morning, and we do have shares for sure on that one. Uh, BA going against the current here. That looks good, up almost 1% uh, this morning. So I don't that, see anything nice. fresh on Rye, but all the EVs are down. So okay, all, these, okay. all these high growth, uh, you know, runners recently mm -hmm. are, are are off on the the drop this morning so gotcha uh all right guys let's stop here let's take a look over at our youtube chat what do we have this morning let's start with uh gustavo okay so there hindenburg yeah. research put something out somebody saying mm -hmm. okay i'm all surprised right. i didn't see that anywhere else mm. so thank you yep thank you for that uh fuel cell here they are 5.3 again volume is okay guys pre-market action is all right you can watch this one you can look at any of these other ev type plays neo um expat uh, they all they all look great this morning um with some good volume i'm going to keep neo on deck and keep those in mind if they do start trading well or hitting our scanners C E E L. uh i don't like these type of stocks like this you know lower price yeah they got volume what's the float on this one i don't i don't know what this is it's not a yeah it's not a low flow stock so um yeah, I, I don't like this one. We've seen this one before, too. I didn't like the way it traded, so I'm going to keep it off my list, guys. Uh, BA, we do have on deck. We'll take, let's take a look at the banking sector, Bank of America. Uh, I like the daily on Bank of America. It's just there's not a whole lot going on as far as pre-market action. So if you look at the daily here, possible breakout of this 37. We're slamming up against that. You know, it might be interesting to see how that goes, uh, how that reacts at the market open. The issue is going to be with these. I, I like West Fargo. Out of all of them, I think this was probably the cleanest trading one at times. Um, we'll be interesting to see at the market open which direction they're going to go here, if they're going to be able to break out and give us a nice play. But for the most part, we know that banks don't trade all that well for intraday plays. Uh, but again, we're, we're in a very interesting situation here with the SPY, with the interest and everything else. So we'll love to see how that plays out. Uh, AMD dropping down 1.5 this morning. I like the way AMD traded yesterday. It was so clean. I'm definitely going to add it to my list this morning. I think that Apple and AMD are two stocks that, depending on how the SPY uh, trades today uh, or in higher trends, they can trade very well, very liquid, easy to get in and out, very high volume type stocks, and they trade clean, guys, which is uh, which is very important for us. Um, all right, heading on down, what do we have here? POSH. What do we got going on? POSH. No, no volume here. Not a great pre market action. Uh, right, we do have AMD. We do have possible continuation. Yes, I do like that. Let's take a look at Roblox. So uh, I, I, I traded Roblox yesterday. I got to tell you, man, this is a scary stock to trade. So oh, yeah. um, it, it is no size. joke. You know, and, and I didn't take that many shares. And I got in right here for the breakout, held through this pullback here. And when we're sitting here, I'm like, wow, the spread is 50 cents. That is just not great. I got out just barely green here. The minute this thing turned green, I got out. So it is a tough, tough stock to trade. I think it's going to stay like this for a little bit until things settle out. Um, be very careful trading this one. Very, very, very careful. All right. So I uh, right now, spread looks great, but it was, again, 50, 30 cents easily yesterday. So, But still, still a good one to watch. Roblox, see how this thing is going to turn out here. It is doing very well compared to when they ipo Right now, many stocks. You know, it's not, it's not too uncommon for, for fresh IPOs to be a little bit like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as they kind of discover what they determine is the correct value for uh, for that ticker. Right. So I, I think it could be a very good trader as we go forward and it smooths out a little bit. I, yeah. I had a trade on it as well. I mentioned it in the room yesterday. I caught a nice pop. Nice. Um, but, you know. It, yeah, it, I, I agree 100%. I still remember when Dropbox first came out. That was the first IPO that I ever traded, DBX. And man, it was wild. It was wild. So And, and it does settle down. It's not a great trading stock now, intraday wise. but. Uh, you're absolutely right on that comment. They do settle out after a couple of days here. So, um, 
All right, let's see. Uh, leg L E G. What do we have here? No, guys, this is not looking good. A couple of black trades, and still you're only at five thousand shares traded, so that is not uh, looking good at all. All right, guys, uh, let's stop here. Norm, let's go over to announcements. We'll come back and fine tune uh, this list. Yeah, buddy. All right, Mike's trade book webinar should be posted. Uh, I, I promise you, I will what find out. What the hell is what? Is, what is going on with this, man? <laughs> I will. I gotta find out what's going on. Every time we switch to the screen, it just automatically starts playing. All right, you know? Mike's webinar should be up next uh, Tuesday at eight PM. We've got Artie talking about risk control, most important aspect of trading. Uh, he was our risk manager for PCT. He's now investment growth analyst over there. So, um, should be a, a a good good webinar next week, uh, eight PM on Tuesday. Then. We had Krata. Uh, her webinar from this week should be posted. Uh, and ready to view if you missed it. Next week, we've got a town hall with Dr. Katz. Awesome format. Love to see those. So we'll have two traders with them. Uh, we'll talk about who those special guests are uh, next week. If you want to participate in the member trade of the day, trade of the week, take a screenshot of your best trade of the day. Uh, it should obviously have entries and exits so we can actually see the trade and then mark it up with any commentary you can give. Post it on Twitter, tagging at Bearable Traders at Mike B underscore BBT and at Norm BBT. Also use the hashtags BBT family, day trading, and stock market. Uh, we will choose a winner for each day that will be announced on the Closing Bell Show and on Twitter. And then we will uh, take all the trades of the day, vote over the weekend, and award trade of the week uh, on Monday. If you're watching us on YouTube and haven't been to the chat, want to give it a try, use the promo code PREMARKET24. That will get you a discount off the intro membership which is seven calendar days, five trading days in the chat. Um, doesn't auto renew or turn into any other kind of membership, anything like that. Um, and uh, it also gives you access to the Monday night classes, Carlos's onboarding class and the new technology class by Kyle. Uh, also, if you want to upgrade your membership or become a lifetime member, use the promo code LUCK40 to get 40% off the elite annual membership. All right, excellent. Thank you, Norm, for that. All right, guys, let's get to it. Let's see what we have going on here. Uh, there we go. All right, let's see what we got going on. So let's look at what our, our main watches at the moment. I like BA. That's looking good, guys. Got a catalyst behind it. Ride is looking very good this morning. I know some of the stuff is dropping, but they're taking a big hit. 18%, 2.9 million right now. That looks very, very good. We do have shares for sure. Uh, and they're not they're recent. Not recent, but again, they only opened up in November. And we're below our IPO, well below our IPO. And we're coming down towards the all-time low here too. So that's very interesting, 1280. And I say coming down, we're nowhere near it yet. But the way this thing is moving, dropping $3, $3 already, that 1280 does not look too far away at the moment. So really like what's happening there. Uh, CHPT, guys, uh, we might drop this one off, maybe put it as a possible because we can short it. And I like to go uh, both routes here. You know, I don't want to be... Uh, handicap one way or the other especially when you know we have to make trading decisions you don't want to be looking at just for one strategy right um that can that can kind of put in a little bias in your trading so you don't want you don't want that let's put that one down here guys cpng what's happening here this is a recent ipo we'll take a look at that neo is great guys dropping nicely apple uh, amd are both going to be very very good this morning if the spy which i believe has got to be dropping right yeah okay no wonder things are turning south here a little bit on the, a lot of our watch list this morning guys you got to keep an eye on the spy um uh, throughout this type of market as you've seen the spy is dictating a lot how these how these uh uh tickers are moving um all right with that said and then our start possible we have nndm that is good we have baba in here as well dropping nicely this morning uh wfc the banks are holding right the banks are up so that's interesting uh finv it's okay i might take get rid of this one let's get rid of this one um uh, go EV. I'll get rid of this one too. Again, we have some good EV plays already. I think XPEP is another one that you can watch. I'm going to add XPEP. Um, I want to make this list very small for this Friday. GameStop will be fun to watch. Uh, and NDM. I think I'm going to remove this one for now as our secondary list. CPNG. Uh, I'm going to move this down as a secondary. Just doing a little bit of a shuffle here, guys. Uh, there we go. And I think one, two, three, four, five. We can move one more up. Maybe AMD. Uh, what do you guys think about AMD? I think AMD could be uh, could be good. 
I would put XPad, but we do have Neo already up there. You know, there's no point in watching both of those. Either one is fine because they're trading very similar uh, this morning. All right, let's do levels, guys. BA, let's start here. So they have a positive catalyst. Somebody placed an order there for the 737 MAX. So that's good news for them on that uh, situation. A high of the pre-market, 258.46. Remember, guys, BA has been trading so clean on the daily uh, the last couple of days. Uh, so hopefully that continues today. Um, one, of the one of the many stocks that are... Uh, Actually, one of the, the only stock that's green in our watch list this morning is BA. So um, that is good. That might not hold for long here. Whereas the market market keeps pulling back here um, towards the bottom, guys. Highs and lows from the last two trading days. I do not think you need to add any more. Maybe above the two fifty eight forty seven that we have here. Let's go back over to the left, and we are going back uh, almost a year's time back in March. So right over here, we have a level right in here two sixty four, and then clearly a nice level right on there, guys level of support we got a nice little bounce there and then the drop again 272.70 so a couple of levels up there again we're far from that um, but those are two pretty good daily levels there here's right this continues to drop nicely uh low of the pre-market right now 1440 let's throw a level there 1440 there we go uh and then above that above that you don't have anything into the highs and lows of the last two trading days you do have this date right over here at 15 We'll mark that because either way, the 15 is going to be an important number, especially when you drop this much. This whole dollar number has become important. So 15, obviously, already, in the, even in the pre-market, you're seeing some action on that number already. So let's keep an eye on that one. Looks like we might lose our previous day close here. I'm sorry, our low of the pre-market. And if we zoom into a couple of days after this thing IPO'd, um, here we do have a nice level. We have 1358. Great level there. Nice couple of bounce. And then below that, this is your all time low at 1280. So that is what you have for a ride right now, guys. Looking very good. Taking a, 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 a just a bloodbath right now at the moment. Uh, CAN, uh, I like the daily on this one, guys. Looking very, very good. There's a Bitcoin play. You'd also have inventory for sure. It, it, it's, it's, I like Mara, but this one has inventory for sure for uh, most of the time. So this is a good one as well. Uh, 32. No, that's not the law of the pre-market. This is the law of the pre-market here. 30, 31.57 is the law of the pre-market. But I'm also want to mark down this 32. You got a couple of bounces off of that here. We're, uh, you know, we're flirting with that level again right now. Let's see if we're going to be able to hold towards the bottom, guys. Lows of the high uh, of the last two trading days. But I also want to mark down this 30, 34. Great area of resistance here. Came back all the, all the way up and then slammed down there nicely. That's a good level to have on deck. Above that, highs and lows from the last two trading days. You got a nice gap here. Look at your high of your pre-market all the way up at a 31 a 36.50 and then in between here you don't have anything on the daily i believe this is all time high as well for these guys um uh, at least for the one year if we keep going back who knows um at least 52 um week on all, uh, all time high so let's go back over here on our five minute from yesterday do we have any good areas of resistance and support and we do right on here guys that's a nice one there 33.50 uh, I'm sorry, 3335. Uh, in here, she's got a couple of breakouts. You don't have a nice move like this one. So let me show you what I'm looking at. Uh, again, this is, this is a great, great play here. You come up, you, you build the resistance, right? You build the high of the day at this time. You come back down, you find the support, and then you come back up and break out of that. See, that creates a nice level. So you know that's going to be important for this stock going forward, right? In here, then after that, it, you don't really get any more of these ABCD patterns type plays. It's kind of just kind of just takes off there. Maybe over here you have one at 34 because the whole dollar, you see the area of resistance took a couple of minutes to actually break out of that. But you don't have this great area here. I love seeing this because usually when you come up and test this for the second, third time, uh, if you get the volume, you're going to get a nice little breakout. So we'll keep 34, 33, 35 for now. Uh, on our list uh, and then you're you're all set on this one with the highs and lows from the last two trading days now you're looking at this list on the daily like wow there's levels all over the place but if you zoom in guys we're going from 34 to 3162 that is a big big move on a stock that's sitting at 30 32 10 so just keep that in mind although these, we got a lot of levels on here these are very big moves you're getting on can um Let's take a look at NEO. So NEO again, very active, dropping down low of the pre-market for NEO, sitting at 43.25. But I do like this level here as well. This 43, a little bit higher, 43.54. Uh, uh, in the pre-market this morning, we had a lot of uh, just a lot of resistance, a lot of support happening there. We did test it already there, uh, and we're slamming against it some more now. Towards the bottom, highs and lows from the last two trading days. In between here, I see a great level right off of this date here. 
this one right over here uh, 4158 you got some support support not quite resistant but you got a nice rejection happening there more resistance and a little bit of support here this day coming back and closing around that 48 4158 excuse me so around that you have your highs and lows from the last two trading days your pre-market high is pretty much where your high from two days ago was above that you have your previous day close i don't think you need to add any more on neo looking very very good this morning and very active uh here's apple again this one looking good as far as levels look at the daily on apple too you have this great level here which is the low from two days ago look at how that is playing nicely there um that is also your low of your pre-market to the t if you go down you have another great level here a great area of support 117.74 and then on this date down here over at a 116.26 so again plenty of good levels here do not need to add any more on apple uh, AMD's uh, also surrounded by the highs and lows of the last two trading days. Pre-market action looking okay. They have 432,000 shares trade. They're getting a lot better. They didn't look so great here. This is kind of a little bit flat. But you can see now we're getting the volume steady and we're starting to build a nice pre-market action. That is what you want to see. You don't want to see this stuff over here. If, you, if you're looking at a chart and it looks like this, uh, you either want to have a very, very great daily you want to have a great catalyst that's probably going to bring in volume. But if this is what you're looking at, um, you know, that could be that, that might not be the best pre-market activity uh, for you, depending on what style you're trading. Right. It all depends on what style uh, you're looking to trade. High of the pre-market 8078. And then that's all I'm marking down here. You're surrounded by the highs and lows of the last two trading days. Um, I don't think you need to add anything more here on AMD. All right. That is what we have, guys. Let's take a look at our moderators lineup. See what's going on there. What does the team like this morning? All right. Let's bring our visuals in here. Uh, here we go. Expand this a little bit and get a nice little view of what's happening. Okay, here we are. Let's uh, scroll to the top. What do we have first on the list? All right, we have Thor. He's watching BA, Docu, Neo, secondary list, PLTR, XPEP, uh, CAN, and DKNG. Jerry likes NVAX, BA. Uh, Riot and uh, the Bitcoins here, CAN and Mara, all uh, probably very active this morning. So be on the lookout for those. Um, sometimes some of these don't have shares for sure. CAN has has it with IB. So if you find one that doesn't have it, maybe you might want to watch one that does have shares for sure. So you kind of take advantage uh, of, uh, of an opportunity there. Tiffany is watching CAN, BA, and Riot. Right, I like really like Riot this morning. Secondary list VAX and also Tesla. Mike is looking at VA and NVAX um peter is looking at joan and uh, h h a y w l b p h r x d x uh and possibly s n c y and m i t c did, did, did peter just like pick the weirdest tickers <laughs> those are all out there. ipos oh those are all ipos okay all right good because i'm like what are these tickers that peter's watching so i miss i misread the ipo i thought that was your watch list <laughs> all right pretty cool um and no right. i want nothing to do with 3d printed 3D. fake meat i was gonna ask you about that what was the deal with that wow no <laughs> a solid no oh my god the stuff that comes out is just great uh john is watching... my own hamburger meat last night for for <laughs> cooking i'm not gonna do 3d printed meat 3d printed meat and then can it's like artificial printing. You could eat it. I mean, what, what's the deal? Yeah. Oh, that just sounds. Wow. I haven't had breakfast yet. I'm probably going to have to skip. It's called a Play-Doh, you know. Oh, yeah? I haven't seen that yeah. yet. Oh. The, the Play-Doh uh, extruder thing. Mm. Interesting. John, he's looking at NVAX, BA, and Tesla. Dima, she is looking at not much as she's watching the Qs and AMD. Peter, now here's Peter's list. That's, that's more like it there. AMD, NEO, BA, secondary list, NVAX, Riot, and ENTX is a low flow stock. So be very, very careful uh, with that one. All right, guys, 9.15 a.m. Eastern time as we get ready here for the market open. Ryan and Andrew are up next. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining the pre-market show this morning over on YouTube. We appreciate you guys being with us here every uh every morning starting at 8 a.m with jared so thank you for that make sure you give us a big thumbs up it does mean a lot to jared norm and myself when we get that Absolutely. nice thumbs up there so uh please do that we highly highly appreciate it guys trade safe have an amazing weekend um make sure today is friday again you you, you want to go into your weekend knowing you follow your rules that you were disciplined that you did not break uh out of your trade book right you have your trade book in sight you know it's very clear cut there's no great areas of your trade book your trade book has its rules has its guidelines what you need to look for if you start second guessing yourself i'm not yeah you know what it looks like it 
No, it's not a trade you want to take, right? So be be aware of that and be very patient. This market requires you to be patient. I know things are moving, but sometimes like we had yesterday, tons of chop requires you to be patient. Look how later in the day, uh, some pretty, some nice moves actually came out. So you do not have to make your trade in the last, in the first uh, uh, 30 minutes of the day. So be mindful of that. Take care guys, trade safe. Have a great weekend. We will see you guys on uh, on Monday. Take care guys, trade safe.